Nobody likes to, to pay this stuff, but it was higher just two years ago. Governor Brown talking about raising income taxes on high earners and sales by a quarter cent on the dollar. Prop 30, funding for education and public safety. One out of every four California voters right now is neither a Democrat nor a Republican. Some candidates in the November election races aren't affiliated either. Is this trending? And big money is talking with a louder and meaner voice in modern political campaigns. What's the bottom line? And now, Politically Speaking with Gene Cubison. Good morning, and thanks for being with us as we count down the weeks, just a little over seven before the presidential election. Congress is back in session for good or ill, and issue campaigns and candidates at every level are up to new tricks as well as their old tricks, demonizing the opposition while pandering to the base and trying to appeal to undecideds. A lot of it isn't pretty. A lot of it is petty. And even cheap shots cost a lot of money. To some extent, we all pay a price, politically speaking. Our first order of business today, Proposition 30, it tops the list of state ballot measures and how it got there has a lot of folks crying foul. We may get to that, we may not, but just know it's got the governor, governor's stamp of approval, an income tax hike for high wage earners and another quarter cent on the dollar in sales taxes for seven years. Most of the proceeds projected at several billion dollars annually on average are earmarked for education, most of the rest for public safety. And joining us now to spar over the pros and cons of the measure are Claire Crawford, Executive Director of the Center on Policy Initiatives, a progressive think tank. She's advocating a yes on 30. And Richard Ryder, founder and president of San Diego Tax Fighters, who recommends a no vote on 30. Claire, we will start with you. In hard economic times especially, there's a lot of aversion to new taxes. Um, this is framed as benefiting education, public mm -hmm. safety. It seems to be polling well. We'll discuss some numbers shortly. But uh, there is that underlying aversion and your concerns about that if this does not pass because we're hearing all sorts of doom and gloom uh, predictions. Absolutely. Well, we are facing a budget crisis. And I can tell you this, part, a big part of my support of Proposition 30 is I'm a mother of a two and a half year old with another child on the way. And for the long term good of our economy and for my child and everybody else's child in California, we need to make sure that our public school system is protected, that we can provide the education that our children need to get ahead. Um, as a Californian, we also need to protect that education system to provide the skilled, innovative workforce that we need to build an economy um, that's going to last and that's going to grow. And the, in terms of, for economic terms, you know, this tax really focuses on asking those that have done the best in this economy to just pay their fair share and support something that's going to benefit all of us. Well, but there is another element to that. That is a quarter cent hike in the sales tax. Um, however, uh, Richard Ryder, um, we see that the polling numbers uh, are, are favoring 30. I'm seeing a few poll of 54 to 38, uh, another poll of 54 to 40, um, 55 to 30, you know, roughly about the same um, in that uh, general area. But I'm assuming that you think those numbers are going to get a lot closer as the weeks go by. Oh, I guarantee they'll get closer. I can't say who's going to win, but this will be a close race one way or the other. Uh, this tax, this double tax, is predicated on the fundamental premise that Californians are not paying their fair share. That we don't pay enough taxes in California. We already pay the highest state sales tax in the nation. Already pay that, and we want to raise it again. We pay the second highest income tax rate in the nation. If we pass this measure, our tax on the well-to-do will be 21 percent higher than the second highest state, which is Hawaii, 34 percent than the third highest state, which is Oregon, and a heck of a lot higher than the rest of the states, including six that have zero income tax. This is a great idea for the other 49 states. It's predicated on the concept that rich people are stupid, that they like taxes and they'll stay and pay. The really rich have homes in other states. They're going to change their residence, at least those that can, and the income that they're projecting they're going to collect is not going to be there. Plus, one other aspect of this is really galling. How would you like to have a tax levied on you in November that goes back to January? That's what this one does. And what's that tell rich people in California? Hey, we don't like you here. Um, your counterpoint here, what would you like to tell the voters in response to uh, his arguments? Well, I would say for one thing, when you actually look at the entire tax burden of Californians, not just the income tax rate, because we pay a lot of different types of taxes, in fact, the poorest people in our state are paying the highest percentage of their income, and the richest are paying the lowest. They're only paying around seven, seven and a half percent. 
So this actually does fairly have that burden go on to people who can afford it the most, who have really, really benefited in this economy. We've seen over the last two decades, regular working people's wages go down um, and the income of the very wealthy go up. There's twice as much inequality of wealth in our state as there was 20 years ago. So it's a fair burden and, and most of us, most middle class taxpayers are gonna pay a very low rate on this and it's worth it to invest in our education. And frankly, we really won't have a great strong economy if we don't have a great education system to produce the kind of workers and innovators that we need to help it grow. Your study, your study is based on a bogus study done by your organization, which is owned and operated by the labor unions. I've looked at it, I haven't tried to get into all of it. Basically, basically they don't count non-tax uh, benefits to the low income people. What, what about, the, but, but where, where is the education funding gonna come from? And to a lesser extent, the, uh, the uh, public safety funding, we've seen prison realignment, which, uh, which may have a fallout effect here on the crime rate. How is it going to be financed if this measure does not pass? Or is that what we have not seen in California is reform, real reform. And I can guarantee you one thing, if this measure passes, we will not see any reform. We will continue to ban private prisons in California, which are used in many other states. We will continue to ban school choice. We will continue down the path we're doing now. We will continue to be in the hole financially. If you look at who's funding this, the top 10 con contributors, most of them giving a million dollars or more, are labor unions. One group that's not, the Democratic Sub Central Committee. This is strictly about labor well-being, this is about labor compensation, this is about pensions, retiree health care, this is, and it's about, also it's about a, a train to nowhere from uh, uh, Bakersfield to Modesto. This is not about the kids. The kids are being sacrificed and put up as hostages in this measure. Quick 20, 30 seconds for your last word. Sure. I mean, here's what's really going to happen right here in San Diego. We are going to go from a class size, third graders, fourth graders, sitting in classrooms with 22, 23 kids right now to 30 kids, 35 kids. We're going to lose counselors. We're going to lose arts programs. This is not about, you know, whatever political football you want to throw around. This really is about our children's education. And I have a personal stake in this. I have a child who's going to be in school pretty soon. And so do many, many, many other Californians. And I think it's a fair tax. And I do just want to make one correction. It's actually the California Budget Project, which is a very re well-respected state organization. Oh, that's a liberal that organization. That's You're on the clock. That's, that's absolute nonsense. It's a, it's a liberal front group. It always has been. It's not nonpartisan. We're going to leave it right there. Claire Crawford, Richard Ryder, thanks for joining us on Prop 30. And coming up next on Politically Speaking, independent voters, they are gaining in numbers. Independent candidates gaining traction. You will hear from one who's running for president. And campaign finances are flooding the market, bankrolling messages of fear and loathing. Stay with us.